is by Mr. Ajay Chaudhary, who is the chairman of Electronics Sector Skills Council and the founder of HCL. So one of the six founder members of HCL, Mr. Ajay Chaudhary, is currently the chairman of the board of governors of IIT, IIT Naya, Naya Raipur and the chairman of Electronics Sector Skills Council of India. He is a Padma Bhushan awardee for his consistent contribution in building the IT industry of the nation, besides several accolades received for his key role in, champ in championing the cause of domestic Indian IT market. Mr. Chaudhary has been involved in going to this society though through his charitable, charitable trust called Swayam. Besides, he's also the board member of the Population Foundation of India and a trustee of Save Life Foundation and he plays an important advisory role in advocacy efforts. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. We request you to take over now with the keynote address. Thank you, Meda. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, COVID has created uh, a lot of uncertainty as we really don't know for sure when and how uh, we will go forward in the next 6 to 12 months. Uh, we could see a W curve where there could be recurrence and lockdowns. So we will have to learn to live with it. There is no real option. Things can only change once uh, we are sure of a cure and a vaccine. So people will be very careful and therefore if you look at, even if a TV fails at home, will you allow the service engineer to enter the house? Will you, for example, go to a restaurant? Will you easily go shopping the way you used to? And will you travel in a taxi, Uber or Ola? Those are all the questions that are all staring at us as we look at this environment. Now, the new normal is going to be a low touch way of working. So the, you'll have to adopt new habits, uh, new regulations, travel restrictions, and also hygiene restrictions. So this will need new skills as technology will pervade the whole system. And as borders will be closed or open very carefully, all countries will need to look at supply chains more widely distributed. Till now, everybody had pretty much one source and that was China. So India is already changing and we've seen that from the announcements made by the Prime Minister, where we are really started talking about local, but with being part of a global supply chain. But that supply chain must essentially include India, which it did not till now. So those people working in industries that are in severe downturn will have to move to another domain. So reskilling will be needed. And so the reskilling training business will also uh, scale and you will see a huge spike there. Healthcare and wellness will lead the growth and maybe pharma, but new skills are needed to use technology and be contactless. Tele telemedicine, for example, <clears throat> will finally happen. It's being talked about for many years. And doctors and new professionals at the rural end will be needed to support this. So we need to skill those people to actually create a new model of delivering medical services. Lots of jobs will be lost. So all aspirants will have to skill up and then compete for scarce jobs, okay? So <clears throat> companies will reduce, as a matter of fact, full-time jobs and move to freelancers and contract people. And this so-called gig economy will definitely come into being. Now in this gig economy, what do you really need to do? You need to create skills by selling yourself and building a business around you as a person. So in a manner, new skills are needed 
and you need to be in a manner like a micro entrepreneur running your own business single handedly very tight tough time ahead for new job entrants also what will be needed is to add more skills to your portfolio <clears throat> if you want to get, enter the job market and lot of learning and skilling will be required through online sources and you'll have to be more job ready than ever before you have to add skills like communications great capability for doing video interviews online tests and you need to learn and skill up to knowing more global languages because if you want to be that or part of that global supply chain you need to know some languages too so if you come with some of these additional skills you may have a better chance to get a new job <clears throat> as manufacturing moves from china we will need new skills and electronics actually will benefit a lot because electronics is huge in china and secondly electronics in india has got priority and a lot of new new capa new Uh, uh benefits have been given by the government for electronics so as a result you will see that you will need to have newer skills as we move forward the main skill that will change and will have to be adopted by many people will be design led manufacturing and if we just do manufacturing we will have lower value added but if you do do design led manufacturing you will have higher value added so i think that's really the major change i feel will happen and also industry 4.0 will be needed now what does that mean for people who are normal manufacturing engineers how do they get to those skills that are needed for industry 4.0 and what new skills are needed is a lot of it so you will need you will need to understand data analytics uh uh big data robotics and automation ai uh, iot and process that digitization across all the business value chain so these are new skills that will be required and therefore we have to gear ourselves up for these new skills in manufacturing as i feel more and more automation will happen in the country and as movements will be restricted it will lead to collaborative design and development across borders and across internationally also so new skills are will be needed like using virtual reality and for example one of the startups that i have been mentoring they have actually created this whole model of architects working from anywhere in the world to be able to collaboratively work with a particular software tool kit and that way they can work together so this collaborative working with virtual reality will become something that will come up in a big way and so therefore you need new skills on how to operate and learn these new skills of virtual reality <clears throat> now of course uh, many similar things are likely to happen and i don't want to give a very very long lecture i'll give a pretty short lecture because i feel that what i want to say can be said in a few words and some important issues so development institutions also will need to adapt to this new reality and money will be scarce i am involved with two development institutions uh, population foundation and save life foundation and what we are finding is that we were actually working on trying to get funding from a lot of public sector units and suddenly all of it has come to a standstill and then we discovered that the reason for it is that all public sectors are actually contributing in a very big way to pm cares so they are giving a lot of their funding to pm cares from their csr funding we are unlikely to get very much out of there the therefore the only two options that will be available for funding 
will be first private organizations they have who have large csr funding but you have to watch out there also a lot of them give funding in areas that they have already decided so if the csr committee has already decided that they are going to invest in women empowerment or they're going to invest in education or they're going to invest in rural that's where their monies will go so i think you will have to find the right private organizations who are working in the domain that you are in and one key thing will be that one thing we have noticed that the fcra piece types of uh, donation monies are not stopping as a matter of fact some of them have told us in pfi for example is that please don't fire anybody we want all of them to stay and we want to continue supporting you so that's good news so i think that's something that's very positive now if we want to work in rural areas we new need new skills and we need need to learn how to do contactless working and technology based working so we you need to really learn how to not go to a particular place but work remotely and also communicate remotely so if you have to communicate remotely you need to learn skills like multi working on multimedia multimedia for example i mean you need to work on many areas using for example uh uh, uh tv uh community radio phones uh voice based response systems multilingual chatbots those are the kind of things that you will need to learn to do and therefore these are completely new skills fortunately for example in uh, in population foundation we've actually been adopting a lot of these technologies for a long time because i have been actually pushing them ahead of time and saying that please go after very high use of technology so that it will get you much further and therefore they actually came up with this whole program of mai kuch bhi kar sakti hu and some of you must have seen it inside that we have all these multimedia platforms that we are using and we've just started a chatbot about a year ago and we are that is in english and that we are going to convert soon to multilingual so those are the kind of new skills of communications that the development institutions will have to learn and get their get their people to learn there has been a huge impact of covid on the innovation engine and that's a very interesting area since i am very deeply involved with startups here government academia startups have worked together in the last couple days to create an absolutely amazing products okay and this is something that we can be very proud of in india so for example i'm i've been working with on a project to create a uh, ventilator with iit kanpur and we did that in flat 5 weeks and it's now going into manufacturing similarly i have a, another uh, uh, startup whom i working with in iit delhi where iit delhi government all of us came together to actually uh, carry forward so anyway i should i like to end up here by saying that a model of skills that a new model of skills will be needed which is more emotional intelligence digital literacy creativity self study skills ecological mindset attention management and concentration and awareness because you will be overloaded with information thank you thank you sir thank you so much for the keynote address on skilling for the future your insights were very helpful